Welcome back to the second episode in this series. If this is your first time here, don't forget to click the subscribe button down below and turn on notifications so you know when I add another video. In this video, I plan on starting our first project in Android Studio and downloading an emulator that'll run all of our apps so you don't have to actually have a physical phone. So let's get right into this video. All right, so I'm on my main computer now, and this is right where we left off in the last video. We had Android Studio pulled up. To create a new project, we're gonna come over to the right-hand side and click Start a New Android Studio Project. On the template page, this is where you can choose what you wanna target your app for. In this tutorial, we're gonna be using the phone and tablet section, but you can either do it for a watch or a TV, the automotive, or some Android thing. But for this video, again, we're gonna stick with the phone and tablet and we're gonna use an empty activity. Now there are a few other activities you can use like the Google Maps activity or a basic login. But again, for this video, we're gonna use the empty activity. We're gonna click next. Then on the next page, we're gonna to to actually specify a few things about our project. The first thing we're gonna to have to do is name it. So I'm gonna call this first app. Then on the next line, we have to create a package name. Now this might look a little funky to you because it's in reverse, but this is just how packages are named within Java. The only thing you have to do is make sure this last bit matches the name you gave your project. So for example, mine, I named it first app. So I'm gonna type in first app here. And then you have to make sure this is in all lowercase letters. Then on the next line, you're gonna pick your save location the language for this tutorial, we're gonna be using Java, and then the minimum SDK. You can choose whichever one you want in reality, but I went with Marshmallow because it hits a decent amount of the devices. Then after that, you're just gonna click finish. So when you first open up Android Studio, it should look something like this. Now, if you're coming from Adobe Photoshop or Premiere, this will look really familiar to you. Each thing is segmented by windows and you can adjust the size of each of them, or you can close them by hitting this little minus sign off in the right-hand corner. Now, if you don't see the code, you might actually be seeing this, which is totally fine. You can swap back and forth between the two by clicking the two tabs up in this little toolbar up here. Now, if you don't see either of these windows, what you're gonna have to do is come over to this window over here, this panel, and then you're gonna wanna make sure that you're in the project and then click Android up here. And then if it still doesn't pop up for you, go up in this app folder, expand that. We're gonna go to Java, the first com folder, and then go all the way down and double click your main activity. And then to open up this graphical one, we're gonna to go to our resources file all the way down at the bottom, open that up and click layout and that activity should be right here. All right, once you have both the main activity.java file open and the activity main.xml file, you can take a look at these two and you'll notice that they have a very similar name and they both have the word activity in them. Now, what is an activity in Android Studio? It's essentially like a new screen, and each screen has different functionality. In the main activity.java file, this is where you're gonna add all of your functionality. So if the user pushed a push button, you wanna execute some code. When the user pushes that button, that's where this takes place. And then in the activity main.xml, this is the layout, the thing that the user will be seeing when they open up your app. So if we had like a push button, you know, we can drag it out here. And then actually we could, you're probably looking at something like this. So we have our push button here. And then in the main activity, you could link the push button to this activity, reference that, and then execute something when the push button is pressed. One thing I should also explain is this little button right here. Whenever we're creating a layout, we're gonna generally use the blueprint side. It's pretty basic. You don't get any of the effects that we add to our buttons. It's just a really primitive layout. And then we also have the design. This is what the user will actually see, what our buttons look like, our templates, our widgets, whatever we add in there, this is what the app will actually look like. You can view them side by side, or generally I just like having one open. So if the activity thing is a little confusing to you, I think the best way to describe this is Instagram, for example. When you have your home feed, you're gonna pull up some activity. So it'd be something like this in the design. You'd have the home feed, this is what you're looking at. That would be one activity. And then within that home feed, they have a bunch of code within this Java file that's executed to pull all those photos from all the profiles. But if you were to go look and upload a photo for your profile, that would be a completely different activity. So each activity is essentially like a new screen or a different segment of your app. All right, so if this is still a little confusing to you, don't worry about it. Once we start creating some very simple applications, it'll all be much clearer. This video is starting to get a tad bit too long, so I'm gonna end it here and we'll download the phone emulator in the next video. 
As always, if you guys have any questions or you just need help with something, leave a comment down below and I'd be more than happy to help you out. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.